am all about working smarter, not harder. And I think you're a lot like me too. These home hack episodes have been really well received by you. And I've got 10 brand new ones that will save you thousands of dollars, a lot of headache. So let's get the super awkward one out of the way up front, that is how to get pee out of a mattress. <laughs> oh my word. Whether you're a mom or whether you're a grandma, a godparent, an aunt, an uncle, if you have kids in your life or maybe a pet, you're gonna really need this hack. I figure I'm not alone in the world. <laughs> So we got a new puppy a few months ago and we've been potty training. It's been going okay, but not great. But our little DIY dolly has picked one of her brother's bedrooms to be her little secret potty place. Oh, poor guy. She has pottied on his mattress. I wasn't gonna doggy shame because she's already in the cone of shame, but for some reason, I don't get the impression she feels very bad for what she's done. What did you do? What did you do? You don't want me to see that, huh? Okay, so here is the mattress cleaning hack that will blow your mind, change your life, and save you a ton of money. It's awesome. So what we're gonna do is we are going to take eight ounces of hydrogen peroxide, and then we're gonna put a couple of drops of dish soap. Now you can use whatever kind of dish soap you want, but I'm going to be using this palm olive, pure and clear, lavender and eucalyptus, because I figure it doesn't have any dye in it, and the lavender and eucalyptus will be really soothing since it's a mattress, it will be really relaxing and leave a really nice scent in our mattress. But use whatever dish soap you have on hand. This is not sponsored by them. I just thought it would work out really well for this. You're gonna put that in a spray bottle. If you don't have a spray bottle, go ahead and mix it up in a bowl and just very carefully pour it on. But I think a spray bottle will work a little bit better to kind of evenly distribute it. Once you have the hydrogen peroxide and dish soap solution sprayed onto your urine stain really well, then you're gonna take some baking soda and kind of sprinkle that over the saturated spot. And I forgot to mention this, if it's a fresh pee stain, try to soak as much of the pee out with a towel and then just wash the towel. If it's a dried pee stain like mine, because you didn't know it happened when it did, then you just start with this hack. Then once you've got the baking soda sprinkled on, you're gonna want to wear rubber gloves that are super inexpensive. You can even find them at the Dollar Tree. Then we're gonna take our rubber glove covered hands and we are going to kind of work in that baking soda into the mattress and then we're gonna let it sit and fully dry. And you can put a fan on it if you want to help kind of speed it up. You can have the ceiling fan, just trying to get it dried out as quickly as possible. You don't really want any kind of mattress to be soaking in any kind of water for a long period of time. You want it to dry out as quickly as possible on this. So that's what we're going to do. Once it's fully dry, we are going to take a vacuum. I'm just going to be using the attachment on my Dyson and kind of vacuuming it up with that. Get it off as good as possible. This will get your mattress brand spanking new. If it doesn't do it the first time, then you can kind of repeat the process until the stain is out. It works like a charm. It will leave it smelling good. The baking soda absorbs all of the odors and all of that. It kind of soaks up all of the yuckiness and your mattress will be like new again. Now that our mattress is clean and looking good again, we're gonna try to prevent this in the future. And we are going to take a mattress cover. If you can get one of these, they are just awesome. These are waterproof, hypoallergenic. We're kind of switching to these because we've got a lot of dust allergies in our family. So we are kind of putting these on all of our mattresses anymore. I'm gonna put a link for this in the description box below. Not sponsored. I just have been really liking these mattress covers. And then if you have a little accident in the future, then you just throw this in the wash and it turns out great. I just did a dining room makeover. I don't know if you notice it in the background, but it was really fun. If you haven't seen that episode, I'll link it below. But I had a water ring, a couple of them actually, on my dining room table. It had actually been sitting for a while. I wasn't quite sure what to do with it. I'm like, oh, do I have to refinish it again? I don't really want to do that. And you know, if you have like a factory finish, can you get it looking just as good? Well, this next hack is for you. We are going to get 
a water ring out of your wood furniture and it's easier than you might think. Now, all you're gonna do is get a hair dryer. And I've heard of a lot of people using an iron before. I can't attest to that because I didn't try that one. But what you can do is get a regular hair dryer. And even though it looks like it's been sitting, it looks like it's dry, most likely there is still water trapped in your wood and we are going to get it out. So all you do is take the hair dryer and you kind of work it in a circular motion, drying it. You might need to take a break because you don't want to warp the wood or warp the finish, let it cool down and then keep repeating this process. I was able to totally remove my water water rings out of my dining table by simply just blowing a hot blow dryer onto the water ring in little cycles until it was completely removed. Even though it looked dry and had been sitting there for a while, it got rid of it and I was totally mind blown. So I hope that that helps you too. hack I brought you into our bathroom that we renovated about nine months ago if you haven't seen that episode it's a great one I'll link it in the description box below but in this renovation I put in a black faucet and drain set it's beautiful I love it but after about nine months with hard water, we are getting some staining and it doesn't look as good. And so for my next hack, I'm gonna show you how to get hard water stains off of your faucet. This can work for your darker colored ones like black or bronze, but will also work on any colored faucet that you have. And what we're gonna use is just some distilled vinegar. And we are gonna first take a Q-tip and dip it into our vinegar and do a test spot on the back where you can't really see it just to make sure on our darker colored faucet that it won't cause any weird discoloration or staining and we're gonna let that cotton swab sit on the back for about five minutes and then we're gonna check it. And then once we found that it is color safe, what we are going to do is pour a little bit of this distilled vinegar right into the sink with the sink closed. And then we are going to saturate some paper towels and just get them really, really soaking and then put them anywhere that you have hard water staining. In my case, it's just on this kind of waterfall spout. And then we're gonna let it sit from 15 to 30 minutes after 15, minutes check on it see how it's going and then if you need it you can use like an extra toothbrush that you've got laying around to kind of scrub or any loosen any of those hard water deposits with the vinegar but the idea is, is the vinegar sitting does all the work for you and then once it's done you're going to want to make sure you remove all of that vinegar with some water and just make sure that it's all cleaned off and dried and then you have a beautifully clean, brand new looking faucet once again, and you let the vinegar do all the work. You just, there's just a little bit of downtime, but have a brand new faucet. Such a cool hack, isn't it? What do you think? For my next hack, I'm gonna tell you how to get your curling carpet to lay flat. This can be from a brand new carpet that you purchased and it's kind of curling from on the roll. I just got a brand new rug and so that was the case for me. But we're also gonna prevent it from curling it back over time. If that is happening to you, we're gonna solve that right now. So the first thing we're gonna do is we are going to take a steamer. If you have one of these, if you don't, then you can take a couple of ice cubes and lay it on there and melt. This really does work really well with the steamer. It's a good investment to have around for your curtains and all of that anyways. So we're gonna steam out the curls. Then we're gonna prevent it from happening again. What you're gonna wanna get is some double-sided carpet tape. You're going to put this on your rug pad if you have one, which I highly recommend using a rug pad. It helps wear and tear on your carpet, helps it be softer. And you're gonna put it underneath the rug pad and you just kinda just peel it off and tear it off. It's pretty easy to use. And then we're going to do that again with the top layer. And so just every, all of the corners, you can go around all of the corners or any place that it could kind of catch on. And that will help prevent it from curling up again and keep your rug nice and flat. I've been using this on my rug in my living room for months and months now. It's working out really, really great. So if you have a little problem area that's close to a door, this is a good little trick for you. Have you ever accidentally knocked over a candle and you like see it happening and it's like it's in slow motion and you're like, no. 
and the wax gets in the carpet and you're like, crap, my carpet is ruined, especially if it's colored or whatnot. I'm going to demonstrate what you do to get this out and have your carpet looking brand new, saving you thousands of dollars. Even if the wax is cooled and it's been sitting there for a while, this should work for you. Okay, so I probably should have used a colored candle wax, but you can definitely fill it on here and you'll definitely see it as we kind of work our way through it. All you're gonna need to do is get some brown packing paper. You can get this really inexpensive at the hardware store. So get some of this paper, lay it down, so everything is kind of in this general area and all you do is you take your hot iron on dry setting, no steam, but really hot. And you just keep sliding this and picking up. Do you see that? It's like getting all of the wax out and if we need to readjust here, we can. So I'm not using my good iron for this just because I use this for like crafting projects. And you can see that it's really taking out all of the wax. You can see that it's not doing anything to the carpet here. And just keep on going and keep on going until no more wax is pulling up. And it will work. It will get all of the wax out. You just have to keep kind of working at it. And there you go. You have saved yourself thousands of dollars from having to re-carpet something. So if you've got a spot on your carpet that's covered in wax, that's how you fix it. On the topic of candles, if you want to extend the life of your candle, this next hack came from Mrs. Alma Trumbull. I don't know if she's from the South, but isn't that a very Southern sounding sweet name? <laughs> and she is very sweet. She comments all the time. And her hack is taking all of your wax squares or your candles and throwing them in the freezer for about an hour prior to you using it. She shared that this helps the wax to melt a little bit slower and therefore last a little bit longer. And it really does work. So that's a fun little trick to help them not melt so fast and help save you a little bit of money, but still get the yummy fragrance out of the candle and help you stretch a dollar. So thank you, Mrs. Alma Trumbull for that great hack. Well, I hope you're enjoying this episode so far. If you're finding value in this, I would love it if you hit the subscribe button and stuck around for a while. Also, if you've got a really helpful home or life hack for me, let me know in the comment section below. I'd love to learn it. Next up, I'm going to share with you how to get paint out of your clothes. Maybe you started painting a craft project and you thought you would be really clean, or maybe you started painting a wall or whatever. You thought, you know, I'm okay. I'm not gonna drip on myself and oops, you bump into a wet wall. You've got paint on your nice clothes. What do you do? Lucky for me, I have a whole bunch of painting clothes and I'm just gonna kind of demonstrate what you do on one of these areas because it's actually kind of easier than you might think. So we're gonna be using rubbing alcohol and normally I would say just go ahead and test for color fastness, but since these are pretty much gonna be ruined if I don't do something about it, we're gonna just go for it. And so I'm gonna just start by kind of lifting up some of the paint with my fingernail, kind of flicking some of that off. Got some of it off there. And then we're gonna just take a Q-tip since it's not a very big spot and we might break out a rag here in a second and kind of just work in some rubbing alcohol. And you can see it's already starting to take it off. So I think I'm just gonna go for it on this and we're gonna just use an old rag and some rubbing alcohol. And look how good this is working and you can hear Dolly in the background so don't mind her she sees something outside but we just take the rubbing alcohol and as you can see it totally has removed the paint if you've got a tough spot you can break out a toothbrush in my case that took it right out we're going to run it through the wash and it will be good as new this hack does work and with a little elbow grease and some rubbing alcohol you can get paint out of your clothes I have been seeing all over social media the pink stuff. Have you heard of the pink stuff? 
Oh my word, I am about to blow your mind using this pink stuff. And I haven't even tapped into the potential of this. This is not sponsored. This is just simply an amazing product and it's gonna save you thousands of dollars. So I will make sure I link this below. We're gonna use this on is to clean your cooktop stove. If you've got a glass cooktop, you know that you get those kind of dirty marks that are a little hard to get out. I have used magic erasers on it before with moderate success. I mean, it does work a little bit but this stuff is amazing it does feel like it's a little bit abrasive but i'm telling you it works fantastic on a glass cooktop and it won't scratch it now you will notice some kind of cloudy areas on my cooktop that was from prior to me even owning the home it was a vacation rental before so i have a feeling that somebody used like some ajax or something on the cooktop so that is just kind of a stain but any of those other like burnt on spots you can use this pink stuff to get out you just simply just work it on and scrub it out for your cooktop i would just use like a regular washcloth to kind of help Help work it in and wash it off and it actually leaves it kind of nice and shiny and so it's a fantastic product it will make getting off all of those dark spots on your cooktop easy i know that we just got through the holidays and so you might have some of those and this will work great Some of you might have seen this hack before, but cleaning blinds is not the easiest, but all you have to do is take some kitchen tongs, wrap them with some microfiber cloths, using some rubber bands to kind of hold them into place on in a couple strategic spots, and you can sandwich them on either side, get the dust off, and clean them nice and clean. If you've got a little bit of stubborn areas, you can kind of lightly dampen that towel to help get that off. Easy peasy. I'm hoping that will help some of you out that maybe hadn't seen that hack before. I had a daughter who was very artistic and very mischievous and she was constantly making her artwork everywhere and one of those things is crayon on the wall now i actually have not had that for a while so i actually had to go in and color on my wall that was a little painful i was a little nervous now i've got two options for you depending on what you have on hand so the first option is a magic eraser you can get a real authentic one at the Dollar Tree, one for a dollar. Oh wait, they're dollar twenty-five now. <laughs> still a good deal. But they also have like a generic brand that I use all the time. I think there's like six or something in the box for that. You can take these magic erasers and just magic erase them off your wall. It can kind of dull the finish. So make sure you go back over it with some soapy water or a cleaner to kind of get the residue of the magic eraser off because it kind of does tend to leave a little bit of a residue when you use them. So just keep that in mind. If you don't have a magic eraser, don't despair. What you can do is take a hot hair dryer and some paper towels and the idea is you heat up the crayon and wipe it off with the paper towels and it goes away so we'll see how this works <laughs> I can already tell you, I do not like this technique. It All it did was heat up the wax and smear it around. And now I think I'm gonna have to use touch up paint to fix it. But before I do that, I'm gonna try the magic eraser. The magic eraser is kind of cleaning up the mess over here. So if I were you, I would go with the magic eraser. The hot hair dryer one didn't work as good because it kind of smeared the color all around. You don't have to repaint them, saving you time, saving you money. It's just a fact of life. Raising kids or having kids around, it's going to happen. You just hope that it's not permanent marker. I've been there before. Not fun. <laughs> Well, I hope you enjoyed this episode. If so, here's another one that I think you'll like as well. And if you haven't done so already, consider hitting that subscribe button right here. It's super easy to do. And I would love it if you joined the DIY Niner family and to all of my DIY Niners, I just want to remind you that you are more powerful than you know. We'll see you next time. Bye.